In this video, you will learn about tensors. Tensors are multidimensional arrays or n-dimensional arrays and they are similar to NumPy arrays. The only difference is that we can store and process tensors on multiple devices like CPU or GPU. This enables distributed training of neural networks. Tensors are immutable like tubers. Let's import TensorFlow STF. We will also import NumPy as NP. Now first we are going to create a tensor of constant. So for that I will call TF. Then I will call the function constant. And inside this I will pass one number. Let's say I will write 5.0. 0. 0 means now this is a data type of float. And if I just write 5 then it will be integer. So let us execute our code. Now we have a tensor of constant type. We have this number stored as 5 and I will assign it to one variable let's say x. And now if I print x we will have this value. We have this 5. We can also check its shape and data type. We can see here data type is integer 32 and shape we can see here we don't see any shape here. If I write here x dot shape, now we see that there is no shape because this is a scalar tensor that is why it has no shape and if I check the data type if I write here x dot d type we have this integer 32. Now if you want to have a float one then you can just write here 5.0 and if I execute it again now if I check the data type it will be float32. So here you can see we got tf.float32. We can also convert this tensor into the numpy. So I will write here x.numpy and now this is a numpy representation of our tensor which is 5.0. We can do all the mathematical operations on tensor. So in X we have, if I print here X, so we have this number 5.0. Now if I want to do addition or subtraction, I can do that. I'll make a new variable result and then I will call this X and for addition I will use the symbol plus and then let's say I want to add 10. So in the result I should get 15 if I print result. In the output you can see here we are getting 15 here we have done the addition similarly we can also do subtraction I'll write here result 1 and now let's say I will minus subtract 2 so 5 minus 2 is 3 and in result 1 we should get 3 here in the output you can see we got 3 here we have done the subtraction so this is our scalar tensor because we have no shape here you can see here we have no shape now let's create a tensor of type vector I'll make one new variable let's say x1 and then I will call tf.constant and inside this I'll create a vector tensor and let's say I'll write here 1.0 2.0 3.0 and let us print x1 and here in the output you can see now we got a shape here so we have this shape which is of 3 because we have rows here and there are total 3 elements that is why we got 3 here and we also got the data type here which is float32 and the numpy representation is given like this here we can also check a data type like this also we can call this t type and this will give us float32 and we can do the similar addition or multiplication operation that we have done on the scale of tensor. We can do the same on the vectors also. So let's say I'll make one variable result 2 and now this time I will uh, do what x1 plus let's say 10. So this 10 will be added to each and every element. So this will be 11 and 12 and this will be 13 and if I print result 2 here in the output you can see I got 11, 12 and 13 because it is adding 10 to each element. So first it will add to 1, then second 2 and third 3. That is why we got 11, 12, 13. 
and similarly if i do subtraction let's say i will write a result 3 x1 minus uh, x1 minus let's say i'll subtract 1 only so here we will get 0 here 1 and here we will get 2 and if i print result 3 here in the output you can see i got 0 1 and 2 this is how you can subtract or add on a vector now let's create a two dimensional tensor or a matrix so we have this scalar uh, this one is scalar in x then we have this vector where we have shape here 3 and now let's create a two dimensional tensor or a matrix so let me make one variable x3 now i will call tf dot constant and i'm going to create a two dimensional tensor here so i'll put here two list symbol one and this is the second now let's say in my first list i will have 1.0 2.0 and 3.0 and in the second one i will have uh, 4.0 5.0 these are all random numbers and 6.0 now let me print x3 and here in the output you can see we got a shape of 2 by 3 because we have two rows so this is the first row this is second row and we have three columns this is first column second column and third column so here you can see this is our first row this is our second row and we have three columns this is our first column this is our second column and this is our third column and we can also check its shape and data type by calling these methods also so if i call x3.shape i'll get the same output which we got here 2 by 3 and if i call x3.dtype I'll get the same output which is float 32 so the data type is float 32 now you can see that here I have passed this number as 1.2 1.0 2.0 3.0 and instead of passing that I can actually uh, type cast that is I can convert the data type while creating a tensor so let's say if uh, I'll make one new tensor x4 and I'll tell you how you can change the data type while creating a new tensor so i will make one new tensor uh, tf dot constant and this is one two three and if i print x4 and if i print this uh, d type of x4 so here you can see it is integer 32 but now let's say if i am passing by default the data type of tensor is integer 32 but now let's say i want to convert this to float type while creating it so what i can do i can pass one parameter here so i'll put one comma here or i can pass data type d type is equal to so this parameter is there d type and i can write here float 32 float 32 is not defined so if i write here tf dot float 32 now here you can see in the output now this this will we will get here instead of integer 32 we will get float 32 here now here you can see we got float 32 here so you can pass this parameter tf dot float 32 and it will convert it to data type of float 32 and here also you will see in the output we have this 1 point 2 point and 3 point because now this has been converted into data type float we also have one more method which is cast so let's say if I don't pass this parameter, if I remove this parameter, now you can see we have this data type integer 32 and here also you will see we have 1, 2 and 3 and here also we will have integer 32. Now what we will do, we will use the method typecast to convert or to change the data type. So I'll make one new uh, tensor, new underscore x4 and now I will call tf.cast. So this function cast will help us to convert the data type and inside this we want to change the data type of this tensor which is x4 so i will write here x4 and what uh, data type we want so we want to convert it into float 32 so i will write here tf dot float 32 now if i execute the code and let me also print here new underscore x4 here in the output you can see we got this uh, new tensor here and the data type is float 32 and here also you will see in the output we have 1.2 point and 3 point 
we can also call this new underscore x score dot d type and here also you will see we got the output as flows float 32 so there are two ways the first is you can either pass parameter here or second you can use this method tf dot cast and by using this method you, you will be able to change the data type from one type to another we can also call inbin function like addition or multiplication so here we have seen that what we have done is we use this symbol plus and this uh, minus but instead of using this symbol we can also call the inbuilt function for addition or multiplication or subtraction so let's do that for that i'll create two new tensors let's say y1 uh, so my first will be tf dot constant and let's say i have one two three then y2 tf dot constant four five six I have these two tensors y1 and y2 now first let's do the uh, addition so for addition we will call tf and from this we will call the method add and what we have to do we want to add y1 and y2 so I'll write here y1 comma y2 we don't have to use the plus symbol because now we are using this inbuilt method which is add if I execute the code here on the output you will see we got the uh, addition here so 4 plus 1 is 5 5 plus 2 is 7 6 plus 3 is 9 that is what we got here we can save this in a new variable let's say result underscore y1 and if i print result underscore y1 so we got the same result here 5 7 and 9 similarly we can also do let's say multiplication so i will write here result underscore y2 and then I will call from TF, I will call the method multiply and then I will pass Y1 and then Y2 and then I will print result underscore Y2. Uh, so here I made spelling mistake, I'm sorry for that. I'll put here R and now here in the output you can see I got uh, uh, multiplication here. So 4 into 1 is 1, 5 into 2 is 10. 6 into 3 is 18 so we got the results here 4 10 and 18 so we can also call this inbuilt method to do the addition subtraction or you know any other mathematical operations and we can also convert tensors to numpy array so let's say we have this y1 here and here you will see we have the shape and the data type and the numpy arrays like this if you want to convert it into numpy array let's say i'll make new variable array underscore y1 and then i will call y1 dot numpy and if i print array underscore y1 so it is i have to put here y1 not just y so here in the output you can see i got here array one two three four so this is a numpy representation because see when i'm calling this y1 what i'm getting here is tf dot tens tensor and then we are getting its shape data type and numpy array but when i am calling this array underscore y1 i am just getting this array because now this is a numpy array this is not a tensor so you can always convert your tensor into numpy you just have to call this numpy method on your tensor and you will be able to convert it we can also convert this numpy array to tensor also so let's say i will make new variable which is tensor underscore array and now what i have to do i want to convert this array underscore y1 into a tensor so what i will do i will call the method from tensorflow i will call tf dot convert to tensor this is a method that we have to use convert to tensor and inside this we have to pass our numpy error which is array aar underscore y1 and then i will print tensor underscore ARR so here in the output you can see we have converted it to tensor now here we are getting the information it is tf dot tensor its shape is 3 data type is integer 32 and the numpy representation is like this so you can always convert a tensor to numpy array and a numpy array to a tensor so both the operations are possible now both numpy and tensors are comparable so we can call numpy functions on tensors also so what what we have what we can do is let's say 
I have um, I will call some of the numpy array functions on this tensor so what I will do I will write here numpy np dot square root of uh, let's say I will call on y1 so before that I'll print y1 here we have this y1 so this is a tensor so what I'm trying to say is that we can call the numpy functions on the tensors so if I print this if I execute the code here in the output you can see we got the square root of y1 and let's say we can also call the square function np dot square and y1 so in y1 we have 1 2 3 so we should get 1 4 and 9 and here in the output you can see 1 4 and 9 because both tensors and numpy they uh, they are same that is why you can call all the operations of numpy array on tensors and that is why whenever we are calling these functions on this numpy uh, the, on this tensor y1 we are getting the output we are not getting any error but numpy operations are not part of the tensorflow computation graph so it's not recommended to perform numpy operations on tensors so even though we can call these functions but it is not recommended that you call the numpy functions on the tensorflow because they are not part of the tensorflow computation graph so that is the reason and now let's see uh, one or two more examples so we can create a zero tensor as well so let's make let me make one variable zero and then i will call tf dot zeros and let's say i will give the shape as three by five and then i will print here zero so here you can see we got a tensor here and all the elements are zero and the shape is three by five that is we have three rows one two and this is the three then we have five columns one two three four and five that is why we got here three by five here we can also create tensors of type ones so i'll make a new variable once and then i will call tf dot once and let's say its shape will be five by five and let me print once so here in the output we got the tensor of one so we have total five rows one two then we have three four and five so we have this five rows and we have five columns one two three four and five so we have we got five rows and five columns we can also reshape our tensor so let's say i'll make this as three by five now this is a three by five ten tensors and now what i want to reshape this tensor to five by three so instead of three by five i want to make it five by three so we can do that so what i will do i will make one new variable tf underscore reshape and then I will call tf dot reshape this reshape function will help us to reshape our tensors and which one we want to reshape we want to reshape this once so I will type here once and what shape we want we want shape of 5 by 3 so we are just reversing it instead of 3 by 5 now I want 5 by 3 now let us execute our code and now if I print tf underscore reshape so we have this tensor here 5 by 3 so here you will see we have we had 3 by 5 and now we have 5 by 3 so we can also reshape our tensors this tutorial was about the basics of tensor and this will help you in the next tutorials where we will start working on some uh, tensorflow models like linear regression or sequential models so this is the basics and you should be aware of basics before you go to the advanced levels I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my video, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.